I want to talk about visualization uh, techniques they can find on rcsb.org. And to continue a train of thought for um, the first part, I would like to show you ways how you can um, color structures by those confidence values. So how you can obtain those PLDDT values that we just saw and how you can access RSCC values for a subset of experimental structures. And for PLDDT values, it's pretty straightforward for, for any alpha fold structure, which is uh, just a single chain. So if you go to the 3D view anywhere on rcsp.org, it will uh, by default be shown in this blue to orange um, gradient, or you will have this PLDDT coloring theme uh, applied by default. However, I want to point out that uh, in some cases, maybe you're looking at, a, for example, at a Rosetta fold structure, which contains two chains. And in that case, we didn't opt uh, to, um, to show these PLDDT scores by default, and rather wanted to emphasize the fact that there are multiple chains present in that particular structure. So if you encounter a case like that and you don't see this coloring, by default, you can always go to this quality assessment panel and it will give you an overview over all the applicable um, coloring themes that are uh, motivated by, by some form of quality measure. So I think that's a pretty convenient way to, for example, color model archive structures or set of fold structures. And it also works for experimental structures. And to give some more details on those um, PLDDT coloring themes, so, Again, we have everything in dark blue basically uh, resembles high confidence regions where the alpha fold two network is uh, confident in its prediction. And we also see, especially in, for example, the N and C terminus or in, in certain regions, it's quite common that you see lower confidence regions. And if you want to get uh, additional information on, on any of those residues, you can always hover uh, over that particular residue in this 3D view, and it will bring up this tooltip that you can see in the bottom right corner, which gives you additional information, like which residue you are looking at. So this position 38, you can see the actual PLDDT value, and you can also see a high level description of what the color means, which might be uh, helpful in an educational setting, for example, or if you're not using this particular color theme every single day. And I also want to, to point out how you can obtain this coloring theme um, if you don't have access to the quality assessment panel, um, for example, if you're looking at the structure alignment, which I will show uh, to you in a couple of, of minutes, then the, the way to request those colorings um, is to go to the components view in Moster. And here you can see I actually loaded three structures and you can go to, to any entry. So you can see that I loaded a alpha fold model and I loaded two PDB structures in this particular example. And if you want to um, access this coloring theme, you want to go to those three additional dots, which give you options to manipulate this particular component. And in here, you can see that you're looking at the cartoon representation for this um, alpha fold structure. And if you click on that, you get another level of, of options. And in here, you get access to the color theme. So initially it will be set to something um, different, but if you click on whatever is in this box, you will see all the color themes that are applicable to this particular structure. So I think this is in general helpful if you want to change um, the color of, of something and gives you access to, to many nice properties like accessible surface areas, for example. But under validation, um, you will find PLDDT values. And the same is true for um, the RS, uh, RSCC values that Jengwa alluded to. So, and again, um, most uh, or the 3D viewer will basically make this decision what is applicable for whatever structure you're actually looking at. And finally, I would like to point out that you can see this low confidence region in the, in the um, bottom right corner where the alpha fold network can't make a, a good prediction and it will place residues somewhere in space, but it's also pointing out that this prediction shouldn't be trusted. And interestingly, if you look at the um, PDB structure for the same sequence, you can see a similar tendency that overall, if you color it uh, now by those RSCC values, the, the overall structure quality is quite high. And you have like uh, large regions of, of confidently um, modeled residues. 
However, you have this particular region where you have low quality uh, according or as quantified by those RSCC values. And you can even see that there's a small sequence region uh, surrounding this Nina or Nina um, sequence where um, the experimental method, we just don't have experimental data for, for those five residues, for example. And I just want to point out that where experimental methods struggle, the, the alpha fold network tends to struggle. And also alpha fold at the end of the day is trained on, on PDB data. And if you don't have um, structured data for this particular case, then alpha fold also struggles to learn any, any meaningful information. And again, just wanted to, to yeah, make this point that um, it, it really makes sense to compare computed structure models with PDB structures where available and structure alignments are a really powerful tool to, to make uh, those kind of uh, assessments. And uh, because of that, I want to show you also how to, to create your own structure alignments. So basically show you how to recreate this view that I just showed you where you can visualize one computed structure model and two PDB structures and compare them by, by structurally aligning them. And to give you some more motivation, why you should care about structure alignments, I, I want to point out that PDB structures are really rich in information. And uh, as we heard in various um, talks already, um, oftentimes you can see ligands being present in, in PDB structures. And that's never the case, at least at the moment, for computed structure models. And also you can see um, PDB structures um, occurring in more complex scenarios where they interact with other proteins or where they maybe form uh, biological assemblies. So you get a lot of information that will be um, present in the form of coordinates that will be deposited in a PDB structure. And it's not the case at the moment for, for computed structure models. So all of them are kind of information sparse, but still, if you're looking at, at one particular sequence, you might want to know for a computed structure model where can a ligand bind. And again, computed structure models can be basically enriched um, by information coming from, from PDB structures. And so you can transfer or map information from PDB structures onto computed structure models. It's also computed structure models. We have 1 million of them integrated at this point in time. So it's a large set of data that is difficult to navigate. And, Structure alignments can help with that. And as shown uh, initially, it's also a tool to, to make assessments or to understand the limitations of uh, whatever structure you're looking at. So yeah, and because of those, uh, yeah, because of the importance of structure alignments, we try to make it as convenient as possible for you to, to create your own alignments. So there's a dedicated, um, page or uh, application on rcsb.org slash alignment where you can create your own alignments. And this tool allows you to align one or more chains to a reference chain. So it's basically pairwise, always with respect to one reference, but still you can align 10 structures or 10 chains if that is um, necessary in your particular use case. And the tool fully supports um, PDB structures, of course, as well as computed structure models. And you can load individual structures by their PDB ID, by their computed structure model ID. And you can even point to external structures. So maybe there's something in AlphaFoldDB or any other resource that isn't yet um, available on rcsb.org. You can point to those structures and you can even upload your own MMZIP files. So maybe you're running a molecular dynamic simulation and you have one, um, one frame of your trajectory that you're particularly interested in, you can upload that and create alignments based on that. And yeah, this tool provides a number of, of options and it allows you to visualize everything directly in Monster and you can even download the, the aligned structures or some meta information like what's the transformation matrix that you would like to, or that you would need to apply to one structure to align it onto the other structures. And just to give you an overview of how the uh, input form looks like. So basically you can punch in individual computed structure model IDs or PDB IDs, and you want to select one chain that you want to align. But 
it's as easy as that pretty much. You can add more structures using this plus icon and this dropdown allows you or gives you access to the other input options to point to a URL or to upload your own, own file. And if we circle back to this mapping idea of taking uh, interesting information from a PDB structure and mapping that onto a computed structure model, we can do it with a query like that. And once you have access to the slides, you can also follow this link and um, yeah, revisit this, this example on your own. So basically the results will look like this, where you get this um, overview over your alignment with some meta information, and you can see the sequence alignment. And it's already obvious that this is a really, it's a somewhat trivial example where you have perfect sequence identity, for example. So we would also assume that your alignment is like a really good quality. And uh, you can look at the scores for your alignment. So you can see the RMSD. Uh, value as well as the template modeling score, which ranges from zero for no correspondence to one for perfect correspondence. And as a rule of thumb, anything above 0 0.5 means that you're looking at the same fault. So um, this is a really good alignment is what I'm saying. And again, it's a trivial case with 100% sequence identity, but still you can get some information out of that. So if you look at the 3D uh, visualization, um, you will see something like this, where you get access to Moster and you will see um, the result of this alignment operation. And I guess the most important um, input option here is the select view dropdown. So initially you will only see residues that have a correspondence in um, the other chains that it was aligned to. But I think the, the most meaningful option, at least for the question that we try to, to answer is to switch to structures where you can see the whole structure with everything else in it aligned to your reference structure. So you can see all the information from those two PDB files aligned to your computed structure model. You get access to the ligands and all the waters that are present in the PDB structures. And yeah, basically you can uh, manipulate the, the visuals by using those eye icons. So for example, I um, I hit all the, uh, I've hidden all the, the water molecules because they're somewhat distracting. But if you're looking at the, the overall alignment, you can see a really strong correspondence between all structures. And you can also make this um, assumption that the alpha fold structure, because it's structurally that similar and has a similar binding site in particular, um, the ligands that are present in the PDB structures, this uh, gray and the, the green ligand, that the alpha fold structure, even though it doesn't explicitly have this ligand present, you can still make this assumption that, yeah, because it's so structurally similar, most likely it's able to, to bind the ligand in the same fashion as the, the PDB structures do. And I, I also want to show you another way to create um, structure alignments, which are based on, on structure motives. So, Previously, we looked at global structure alignments, which try to align the, the overall structures. But I think that um, structure motives in the sense of a handful of residues and a characteristic um, orientation uh, is also really meaningful because basically structure motives are a way of reducing the enormous complexity of a protein structure. And most of the time, you're only interested in a binding site or an active site. And the rest of the, the protein structure is just there to to fix this binding site in place and to modulate its properties. So it's a nice Sebastian, way. apologies for interrupting. You have five minutes. Yeah. And thank you. So I, I think it makes sense to, to use this representation for, for more complex scenarios. And you can make use of that by, by defining uh, structure motives and searching for them. So we offer tools for that as well. And everything is again, fully integrated into Molster where you can define and extract um, whatever binding site you may be interested in and you can search for it uh, on rcsb.org. So basically it will look like this, that if you go to a structure summary page, for example, for 1B54, you can create this ligand focus where you focus in on, on one particular biologically meaningful ligand. And it will look something like this, where um, again, you zoom in on the ligand and once you uh, arrive at this step, Moster will um, show all the non-covalent interactions that 
that are formed between the, the protein and this particular ligand. So you can see this um, network of hydrogen bonds that fixes the ligand in place or that mediates those interactions between the polymer or protein chain and, and the ligand. And if you switch to this um, selection mode by clicking this cursor icon, and most of it will allow you to identify or select individual residues. So here I selected those four residues that are close to this aromatic ring because I deemed them of interest. And just by selecting those four residues, you fill this list of, of the residues that you're actually interested in, that you want to search for on rcsp.org. And as a final step, you will click Submit Search, and this will allow you to find any occurrence of those four residues that have a similar um, orientation. And results will look like this, where you can see, if you opt in, you can see computed structure models, you can see PDB structures, and you get um, a lot of meta information that is specific to the structure motive alignment itself. So you can see what were the residues from this particular computed structure model, for example, that were matched to your query motive, and what is the RMSD of this alignment? So what's the, the alignment quality for those four uh, residues that were mapped to the four other residues from this structure. And as a last um, thing, you can click on align to uh, visualize the, the alignment in Moster. And we'll look something like this, where you can initially, you will get um, a visualization, uh, this ball and stick representation for your query motive, what you're searching for. And you can see how the, the four residues that the algorithm identified um, in the computed structure model in this example, um, how they are oriented. And you get access, like in many other places in Moster, to this components panel, where you can adjust the divisibility of all the other components. So again, initially, you only see this ball and stick representation for the computed structure model and the PDB uh, structure motives, only those four residues, but you can um, enable the visualization of the overall polymer chain of the PDB structure. And you can also uh, activate the visualization of the ligand that is present in this um, PDB structure. And yeah, and the last thing I want to point out is that how similar the, the binding site residues are in the blue alpha fold prediction in comparison to, to the PDB structure. So I think that's, that's pretty remarkable that at least in this example, you can really see basically a, a perfect prediction, at least at um, in, in this small region of, of your protein structure. So, and yeah, for the sake of time, I guess I'll, I'll come to a close and